So today is day three of chapter 4.7. Today we're going to be looking at the law of cosines. Here's your warm up. Take no longer than three minutes to do this warm up. We've got a long lesson today and we need to get through it all. So please pause the video and spend no more than three minutes working on this problem, these three problems. And starting up again. So I'm not going to go over these now. If you don't know how to do them, then you're going to have, there's a separate video you can watch on how to do them. I'm not going to explain them to you. This, in this triangle, you would have one solution in triangle ABC. You would need to calculate the height. You've got a short corresponding side to an acute angle. When you calculate the height, you get the height to be 55.79. This length corresponding side, you could not lean a 48 foot ladder against a 55.79 foot wall, could you? It's got no solutions. And in this triangle, again, you've got an acute angle. When you lay them out, you've got side side angle. The side that corresponds to the angle, the angle is R, the side that corresponds to it is 23. That's shorter than the other side. So again, you've got a short, acute, side side angle of a problem. So you'd need to calculate the height. The height on this one is 15.03. If you had a triangle, if you had a wall that was 15 foot tall, you would be able to lean a 23 or the meters ladder against it. This one's going to be one of those cases where you have two solutions. Um, there's a, in the notes, there's how to solve this entire triangle, but I'm not going to go over that now. Today, we've only got one day on the law of signs, and that's what we're going to focus on today. So, oh, there's the flow chart you would have used to use them. I'm not going over that now. There's a separate video on that. Okay, so here is the law of cosines. Please write out all three of these equations. You can use the law of cosines. You should, you can't use the law of sines. You have to use the law of cosines if the information you've been given is side angle side or side side side. So in a triangle, I'm just going to, I'm, what I'm drawing, I'm going to delete again. Say you are given side angle side. Say you are given this side, this angle, and that side, that side angle side you would actually use this version of the equation because you've been given angle C, C. If you had been given, um, if you'd been given side, angle, side. You've been given side A, side C and angle B. You would use this version of the equation. Okay, and if you'd been given if you've been given angle A and you've been given side angle side, you would have been given side B, side C, and angle A, you'd use the first version. Now let's talk you through. I'm just gonna use um, look at this one with C. Do you recognize that? That looks a little bit like the Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals, it's really A squared plus B squared minus an ugly lump. So that might help you sort of kind of learn how this works. Try to learn the patterns, not the letters, because we're going to give you triangle XYZ or triangle KLN, they're not going to have A's, B's and C's in them. So you can really just learn one of these. You don't have to learn all three, but you're learning a pattern. Let's look at that first one and let's talk about what, what's in this um, pattern. If you use the equation that starts with A squared, you're looking at this side. This side squared is equal to this side squared, plus this side squared minus two times this side times this side times the cosine of the angle in between it. Do you see? A squared equals 
the other two sides squared and added, then you take away two times these two sides multiplied by each other and multiplied by the cosine of the angle that's in between them. Try and learn that pattern. I'm going to go through it one more time. I'll use a different scenario. Let's use the one that starts with B squared. If you had been given angle B, you so you would use the law of cosines if you'd been given angle B and the two sides that were each side of it. So if you were given this angle and side A and side C, how the equation works is you say that the side you haven't been given, the side you haven't been given, if it is squared, what have I written that? Oh my goodness, what's going on here? Oh, <laughs> Oopsie. Is my pen going to go crazy? Or is it going to work again? Please work. Don't do this to me. Okay. B squared equals square this side, A squared plus square this side. Then, so you square the other two sides, add them, then you subtract this side multiplied by this side two times, two times this side times this side times the cosine. It's the law of cosines. You're using the cosine of the angle in between them, okay? You've got to try and learn those patterns. Don't use the letters. Right, let's move on and try an example here. So if we were given side angle side, that's the easiest way to use the law of cosines. When you, it, you have to use what you've been given. If you've been given side side angle, you can't use the law of cosines. You have to use the law of sines. But if you've what you've been given is side angle sine, then, then use the law of cosines. So let's draw up this information. A equals 39.4. So we've been given one angle, put it in the bottom left. That's side A. And that's cosine A. And we've given side B equals 12 and side C equals 14. If you'd written these the other way around, your B and C would be in different vertices. C would be up here and B would be down there, okay? So we don't know the things we don't know on this. What do we not know? We don't know what A equals. We don't know what angle B equals. We don't know what angle C equals. So we're gonna use, we've been given side, angle, side. We're going to use the law of cosines to find side A. And the pattern goes, A squared will equal the other two sides squared and added. So it'd be B squared plus C squared minus two times these two sides again, multiplied by that two times the cosine of the angle in between them, which is gonna be the same letters you had at the beginning. The letter at the beginning and the end are gonna be the same letter. So let's just put in some information there. B squared is going to be 12 squared plus C squared, that's going to be 14 squared, please excuse my dogs, minus two times 12 times 14. So I'm just writing these two numbers again, but not squared times the cosine of the angle in between them, which is 30, oops, 39.4 degrees. Now, pick your calculator up and put all of that in. It's hard on the little calculators. If you've got a graphing calculator, it's easy. Please don't work this out. Don't work out 12 squared separately and 14, well, certainly don't work out this bit separately, okay? You can work out 12 squared is 144, Add that to 14 squared. I'm not sure what that is. Is it 289? I'm not sure. I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, but try and put it in your calculator in one go, only pressing enter once. I find that the people who put them in in little pieces are the people who get these problems wrong. So I'm doing 12 squared plus 14 squared minus 
two times 12 times, you can put in parentheses for the multiplication if you want. It's easy to just hit the multiplication P multiplied by the cosine of 39.4. Check that your calculator's in degree mode. Press enter. And now we get 80.4. Three six one five one nine three. So that's eighty point three six two. Rounded to three decimals. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have rounded it because was that my final answer? No, that was a squared. That was a really bad idea to round that. Only ever round when you're looking at your final answer. So let's go back and fill in what this really was. It's 80.3615 stuff, 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 stuff. Yeah, write down as much of it as you can be bothered to, but certainly more than three places because it wasn't your final answer. To find A, this was A squared. I'm going to have to take the square root of that. So A is going to be the square root of all that 80.36 stuff, 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 stuff. That's not a good idea to write that on your paper, please. Um, so do the second square root of my answer. And you should get now, you're getting, I'm getting 8.96445863. I'm getting 8.96445863. Sorry, I'm writing with my mouse, it's horrible. This we can round. 8.96. That was my third, followed by a four. I don't round it up, but finished. So that is the length of cider A. It really helps if you put it on your picture because at the end, then you'll be able to actually see if this stacks up. My dogs are going absolutely crazy in the background. A dog walked by on the path outside. Silly animals. They want me to take them out. Okay. Oh, gosh, look at that. Rounded to two places there, not three. You are, the law of cosines does take longer to use than the law of sines, but we're going to find out today that there's a reason it's really advantageous. It has its advantages. It's really useful to find one thing in particular. But if you have a choice and you're not finding the largest angle, use the law of sines because the law of sines is so simple. So once you've got all three sides, if you've got, now I've got an angle and its corresponding side, now I can use the law of sines. So how I'm going to set this up, I've got the sine of 39.4, that's the sine of A, divided by side length A, which is what we've just worked out. Ooh, if I'm using it in a calculation, I better not use the rounded value. It's a good value. Good job I wrote that all down. Nine, six, four, four, five, that'll do. Always work to more, work to more numbers than you want in your final answers. Now, which would I find next? Should I find angle B or should I find angle C next? Do you remember one weakness of the law of sines? When you use the law of sines, you're going to have to, if you're using it to find an angle, you're going to have to use inverse sine to find the angle. An inverse sine, if you're finding the largest angle in the triangle, that largest angle might have been obtuse. An inverse sign is not going to give you an inverse obtuse. It's going to give you the acute version of that. If you can avoid it, never use the law of signs to find the longest, uh, to the biggest angle. So look at the sides. 14, this is the longest side. This is going to be our biggest angle 
try not to use the law of science to find it because there's a possibility this triangle this has not been drawn to scale there's a possibility that could be obtuse because it's opposite the longest side so let's not find angle c next let's find angle b okay if you have a choice of the order to work things out with the law of signs always find the smallest angle first so i'm going to say that this is equal to the sine of b divided by side length b which is 12 so solve that cross multiply the sine of b is going to be that 12 would come up here it's going to be 12 times the sine of 39.4 ooh can't write with my mouse 39.4 divided by, ooh, that big, horrible, ugly mess. Been good if you'd saved it in the memory of your calculator. So that, and I'm hoping that's gonna better be a number between negative one and one, because it's the value of a sign, it's not the angle itself. Put that in your calculator. Remember to close parentheses after entering an angle if you're taking sign of it. Okay, I'm putting in the full fig number from is still stored in memory. And I'm getting there 0 0.84. Oh, I might as well write it. Let's start out of the way. This equals 0 0.8. Four nine six six. Two nine nine eight. Blah 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 blah. So angle B is going to be the inverse sine of that. All this stuff's going to go in there. Can't bother to rewrite it. So hit second sine. Pull up your previous answer and you should get 58.175 is what I'm getting here. It's an angle so I can round it to one decimal place. So I'm going to call that 58.2. Oh, I've got an answer from a previous year here. Is it the same? Yay, that's good news. Then how do you find, so now I know if you wrote that in here, I now know this angle here is 58.2. What's the only thing I've got left to find? Angle C. So we're going to find angle C just by subtracting. Angle C equals, that looks like an E now, good grief. Angle C is 180 degrees minus angle A minus angle B. Plug that into your calculator and let's see, I've done this in the past, the answer's here. You should get 82.824. Remember when you have finished doing all this, oh gosh, I'm gonna get rid of all that on my screen now. This, if this was 82.4, quickly check your triangle. This is the biggest number, 58.2, 82.4, 39.4. So this should be the longest side, 14, 8.9 and 12. That's right. Then look for the smallest angle, which out of these three, the smallest one is A. This should be the shortest side. Is 8.9 shorter than 14 and 12? Yes, it is. Okay, just quickly check your work like that. So that was that one. Let's try another one. Okay, given side, 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 using the law of, sine, law of cosines to find an angle. Hmm, which angle would you find first and why? Well, remember the reason, um, let's label these up. Ooh, P is 44, so this must be P, so this must be angle P. Q is 47, so this must be Q, so this must be angle Q. R is 73, so this one's side length R, this must be vertex R, okay? If we were using the law of sines to find an angle, inverse sine 
remember, can only find angles in the right half, angles from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. Inverse sine can only find an acute angle for us in a triangle. It can't find the obtuse. That's why we use inverse sine to just, we always aim for the smallest. But if we're looking at inverse cosine, if we're using law of cosine to find an angle, we're going to be using inverse cosine. And remember how these went together? Cos sine. Inverse cosine looks in the top half. It can find any angle at all between zero and 180 degrees. Inverse cosine is not going to give us that problem with the ambiguous cases we got with the law of sines. So if you're looking for an angle, always when you're using the law of cosines, with the law of cosines, find the biggest angle. Because if there is an obtuse angle, law of cosines will find it for you. Law of sines wouldn't. So use the law of cosines in step one to find the largest angle, Then you'll, which will be, it's going to be this one. It's going to be R because it's opposite the longest side. Once we've found this largest angle, then we'll be able to use the law of sines to solve that. And then we'll only have one more angle to do. We'll, we'll use it to find either of the other two angles. And the other one, would, the last angle would find by subtracting from 180. So let's solve this for angle R. So if that's the angle I'm interested in, I'm going to want to have the equation that's got the cosine of this angle. So this angle is between this side and this side. When I'm sort of highlighting the bit that makes side angle side. So my equation is going to be, this is the number, that, the side that's on its own. I'm going to have 73 squared equals the other two sides. Square them and add them. Do you remember what I said about memorize the pattern, not the number, the letters? So the side opposite the angle you're interested in, square it. Set that equal to the other two sides squared subtract two times, you can use parentheses or multiplication on your, when you're using your calculator, 44, these two sides multiplied by each other, multiplied by the cosine of the angle in between them, which was this R that we don't know. So now we have to solve this whole equation for cosine of R. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get this lump that's subtracted. You can solve it any way you like. You do the algebra however you want to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this whole expression and add it to both sides. So I'm going to have 2 times 44 times 47 times the cosine of angle R. And then I'm going to subtract this 73 squared from both sides. So that would be what was originally on that side, 44 squared plus 47 squared, subtract the 73 squared. Can you see what I've done here then? I've moved this term to the right by adding it to both sides. I've moved this term from, move this term to the left. I'm going to move this term from the left over to the right by subtracting it. Now, keep your eye on what you want. I'm solving for the cosine of R. So I've got to get rid of all of this stuff that the cosine of R is being multiplied by. So my cosine of R is going to be what's originally on this, this side, 44 squared plus 47 squared minus 73 squared. And I've got to divide away all of this stuff here, divide that on both sides. Okay, and this is going to solve for the cosine of R. So when I want to find, I'm going to work out what that equals. Again, a cosine function has a range of negative one to one. If I get it getting a negative cosine, if this turns out to be negative, all it means is that I've got an obtuse angle. 
cosines would be positive in quadrant one for an acute angle. They'd be negative for an angle between 90 and 180 degrees. So this is going to end up being, the angle is going to be the inverse cosine, to get rid of that word cosine there, inverse cosine of whatever this turns out to be. So let's plug that in your calculator, off you go. So in your calculator, 44 squared plus 47 squared, subtract 73 squared, divide by two times, you've got to enclose the numerator and the denominator in parentheses if you are using a simple calculator. Okay, what you should get there, oh good grief, my calculator's given it to me as a fraction. I don't want it as a fraction, what's that as a decimal? I don't even know what I've done there. Oh, I've cleared out my whole calculator, that wasn't very useful. I hope you're doing this better than I am. <laughs> oh, I have to start again. Okay, I am getting, I hope this is right, I was fiddling around there, I've got the wrong calculator here. I'm getting there negative 0 0.286266926, so negative 2.286266 and stuff, stuff, stuff. If you've got that much the same as me, you've probably got the rest the same as me. So that's what has to go in here. Do an inverse cosine of that. Didn't matter that it was negative. It wasn't the angle itself. Okay, my, oh no, my calculator's in radians. Good grief, I was looking at it. I just got, how I knew this was ridiculous. I just got the answer 1.86 there. My calculator's in radians now, great. And now I can't get rid of, come on, get rid of this stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I can't get at my rays. Okay, I'll just have to cross it out. <laughs> All this junk on my screen. You might not be able to see the junk on my screen, but I can't get to the bottom values there. So I can't erase what I just wrote. Going to change the mode on my calculator. Isn't this fun? That's done. The process is oh, good grief. Reprocess that, and I'm getting 106. Oh, there we go. That makes a lot more sense. That's 106.6. Oh, 106 106.63459. That makes sense. That's the largest angle. Now I could go on and do sine of that angle divided by 73. Let's, let's finish this problem off a bit. Let's see if I can make my lines a bit narrower and change the color. So now I found that one angle. I found angle R. That's a, basically 106.6. Now I can do law of sines and say the sine of 106 point, and I'm not gonna just use when I'm calculating 106.6, I'm gonna pull from memory all of this. Divided by the side that's opposite it, 73. 
would equal. Now choose, when you're using law of sines, just make it a habit of always choosing the smallest angle you can. And the smallest angle I can choose to find Q or P. P is smaller than Q because that side is shorter. So I'm going to find angle P. Side of P divided by 44. So the sine of P equals 44 times the sine of 106.63459. Oh, I wish I wasn't having to write with my maths at home. This is so messy. That's going to give me hopefully a value between, remember I'm looking for a value between negative one and one if I'm doing a sine. I'm getting 0 0.57751. Five. Um, your, if yours is slightly different, it's probably just a small rounding error there. So that gives me angle P, do the inverse sign of that. That number here goes in here. And that gives me 35.27595. So that's 35. So, and I'm my last angle must be, so I know this one now, that's to one decimal place, it's 35.3. So to find angle Q, my last angle, and now I can just use the angle sum property. They add up to 180, so do 180 minus the other two angles. And now I can just work to one decimal place because this will give me my answer to one decimal place here. And you should get the answer 38.1. Okay, let's see what else we've got to do. Ah, terrible joke of the day. These are the ones we had yesterday. What do you call a reindeer with no eyes? No idea. What do you call a reindeer with no eyes and no legs? Still no idea. Okay, so what do you call a reindeer with cotton wool in her ears? Anything you like, she can't hear you. I told you they're really, really bad. Okay, so when would, you need to know when can you use law of cosines, when can you use law of sines? You can use law of cosines when you've been given side angle side or side side side. To use law of sines, you must have an angle and, and side that's opposite that angle, it's corresponding side. So let's have a look at these, these little pictures. If you've been given angle, 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 you can't solve them. It has an infinite number of solutions. It's not possible for you to work out anything. If you'd been given angle, angle side, just let's say, say you knew this angle, this angle, and a side. You've got to choose to go either counterclockwise clockwise or counterclockwise around your triangle and think if I knew an angle, angle side, do I know an angle and its side opposite? Yes, I do. Give an angle, angle side, I'm going to use the law of sines. And I'd, the next thing I'd work out would be this side over here. Oh, we know this one well. If we know that if we've got side, side angle, we're going to put side, side angle. We have an angle and its side opposite. We can use law of sines and we're going to find the solution. We're going to have to be very careful. Okay. If you give an angle, side angle, Angle, side, angle. Who you don't know this side opposite this angle. You don't know this side opposite this angle. You can't use the law of cosines because law of cosines you can only use when you've been given side, angle, side, or side, side, side. Could we use the law of sines? Yes, because the first thing we will do 
is we will work out the size of this angle by doing 180 degrees minus the other two, and then we will have this angle and the side that's opposite and we'll be fine. Given side, angle, side, doesn't matter where you draw them, side, angle, side, you use the law of cosines. This side squared will equal this side squared plus this side squared minus two times this side times this side times the cosine of the angle in between. That's how the pattern goes. That'd be law of cosines. Given side, 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 you will use the law of cosines to find the biggest angle. So you look for the longest side on this one, just by looking at it, it looks like it's this one here. You'd use it to find this angle. Once you'd found that angle, you've removed any possibility of these other two angles being obtuse. So the law, you'd use the law of sines after that because law of sines is quicker, but law of cosines more dependable to get the right answers. So you can take a snapshot of this. Well, let's first, we'll go over it. Given side angle side, use the law of cosines to find the side opposite the given angle. Uh, this is if you're given side angle side. Yeah, you're given this, this, and this, you would use the law of cosines to find this side opposite that given angle. And then you'd use the law of sines to find this angle opposite the shorter of the two given sides. Remember law of sines go for smaller. Sines go for the smallest angle you can find because this angle is always going to be acute. The angle opposite the shorter side will always be acute. Law of sines won't get won't let you go wrong there. Then find the third angle by subtracting the other two angles from 180. Okay. If you're given side, 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 find an angle. And the, what you'll do is you'll use the law of cosines. And when you're using the law of cosines, it's fine to find the biggest angle. So always with the law of cosines, choose to find the biggest angle first, because if there isn't a choose one, law of cosines will find it for you without a problem. Then you can move on to use the law of sines, find either of the remaining two. Never ever, if you can avoid it, sometimes you don't have a choice. If you've been given a side side angle, you don't have a choice. You have to just find the angle opposite the other side. You've just got no choice. But if you're given a choice, never use the law of sines to find the largest angle, because if it's obtuse, the law of sines won't give you that. It'll give you an acute version of it, the reference angle for it in quadrant one. So let's have a look at this problem here. If we're asked to solve every angle, not just the shot angle, here's the shot angle. The shot angle is opposite the side six feet. But we have been given here, let's actually draw up what we've been given here. We've been given a side, a side, a side. Let's just redraw that as a triangle. We've been given, just drawing a random triangle here. This is where the player is. Here's the goal mouth. We know this side is six feet. That's little a. We know little c is 20 feet. And opposite b, we've got 24 feet. So we've been given three sides. So we, we can't use the law of sines. We have to use the law of cosines when you're given side, side, side. You don't have a choice. You're gonna start off with the law of cosines. And remember with the law of cosines, always find the biggest angle first. So look for the biggest side. We're gonna use it to find this angle first. So off we go. The pattern when you're looking at law of, law of using law of cosines, Arrange everything that goes like this on one side and use this side as the one that's on its own. 24 squared will equal. Get the other two sides, square them and add them. Then subtract two times those two numbers you just wrote, but without them being squared, times the this law of cosines. So it's cosine of the angle in between them. And this is side B. We're starting with B, we're finishing with B. Now solve that. Now I know, I manipulate this so often, I know what it's gonna look like. Cos B will be equal to 
20 squared plus 6 squared, when you've done your algebra, this is what you'll end up with, divided by 2 times 20 times 6. Put that in. If it comes out to be negative, that isn't a problem. Don't worry about it if it's negative. Put that in your calculator. Remember, this isn't the angle. This is the cosine of the angle. Remember, if you're dividing by more than one thing, put them in parentheses. If you're not using a proper graphing calculator. And yeah, it did turn out to be negative. It turned out to be negative 0 0.5833. Three is going on forever. So my angle B is going to be the inverse cosine of that negative. Don't lose the negative. That's telling me it's an, an obtuse angle. Put that in your calculator. And I'm getting, oh, that's big. It's 125 degrees, 125.68. Five, three, three, four, seven. So that's to one decimal place. It's one hundred twenty-five point seven degrees. I'm then going to go on to use the law of sines to find one of the an other angles. So I'm going to say the sine of B, but when over side length B, which is sine of this sine of this angle here, the sine of one hundred twenty-five divided by the side length opposite of it. When I'm putting this in the calculator, don't use the rounded value. Put in as many of the decimals as you can to keep that accuracy or learn to use them, the memory function on your calculator so you don't actually have to type it in. Don't put a rounded value in a calculation. And then you can find either of the other ones. Let's, I normally use it to find the smallest if I'm using the law of sines. So I'll do sine of a divided by side length A is six. So that would give me sine of A equals six times sine of one, two, five point six, eight, blah, 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 divided by 24. Put that in your calculator and then do inverse sine of it. I'm getting the sign, this sign here to be 0 0.203058282, blah, 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 blah. So angle A is going to be the inverse sign, cancel out the word sign by using inverse of this number here is going in there. And that's turning out to be 11.7158. So rounding that, angle A is 11.7 degrees. I found two of the angles. How do I find the third? I'm just going to use 180 degrees, subtract the two angles I've calculated. which gives me 42.6. If you put all those angles in place, you should find that the smallest angle is opposite the shortest side. This was the largest angle, it was 125. And this middle-sized angle at 42.6 is opposite the middle length side. Okay, should all stack up like that. Are we nearly finished? Oh, we've gone through all that. Go.
that was finished in previous years. Okay, to find the missing piece of the triangle listed below, would you use law of sines or law of cosines? Let's have a look at these. What have we got here? Find A. If I've got triangle ABC, I've been given one angle, I'll put it here. I've been given side B and side C, RK. So I haven't been given side A. Okay, I do know B is 12 and C is 19. I have been given side angle side. If you've been given side angle side, you're gonna use the law of cosines. In this next triangle, I've, again, I've been given one angle, two sides. Let's draw it out. I'm not drawing it to scale at all. I know there's no way that this is 125 degrees. If that's angle A, I've been given side length A. Okay, as soon as I see an opposite pair, I'm using the law of sines. Okay, C, say it's down here, angle C is there. Ooh, oh, C is 24. Well, this wouldn't be too bad. This is longer than that one. I'm gonna use law of sines and I wouldn't even have to worry about it. There's not gonna be an ambiguous case on that. I haven't been given a short acute. Oh, ooh. yeah, 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 it can work. This is longer than that one. Right, triangle X, Y, Z. We have been given side, side, side. Mm. Given side, side, side you have to use the law of cosines. You cannot use the law of sines because you don't have an angle to put in one of the ratios. And this last one, I've been given angle J, 125 degrees. I need a fine side length J. And I've got two other sides. Okay. I've been given side angle side, when you've been given side angle side, you're gonna start off with the law of cosines, okay? And J squared would equal 33 squared plus 24 squared minus two times 33 times 24 times the cosine of the angle in between. Learn that pattern. Okay, we're done. That was a very long lesson. I hope this actually finished. <laughs>